First I want to measure the residual noise of the uh, headset when tracked by the lighthouse base stations or by how much it jitters when it's supposedly in a fixed place. In order to do that I have put the headset onto a chair somewhat in the middle between my two base stations which are approximately four meters apart. Uh, so it's around two and a half meters from the headset uh, to each of the two base stations. And here on the screen uh, you see uh, you see the position orientation of the headset indicated by these three axes which intersect in the middle and if I zoom in a bit more you can see how it very slightly jitters and if I zoom in quite a bit more then you can see uh, in detail what it does. These uh, gray lines and white dots are a trace of tracking data. Uh, those are the last two and a half thousand measurements that get reported by the tracking driver. Um, the driver updates tracking data at 1006 hertz. I do not know where the 6 comes from. So that's what you're seeing here is about two and a half seconds worth of tracking data. Um, I want to stop uh, tracing that right now and then measure the, um, the amount of noise that we have here. So let me create a measurement tool and measure the distances. And then let's start by measuring across from here to there, give or take. And that gives us uh, a residual of 0.34 millimeters, which is exceptionally small, I have to say. And then the other direction gives us 0.32 millimeters also very small and then the third direction gives us about 0 0.27 millimeters. So the tracking noise uh, is, uh, is very small and you notice that the um, device drifts just a tiny little bit. It used to be here, now it's over here. But if you think about it, that is less than a millimeter that it is often where it initially was. So in other words, the tracking is, uh, is pretty much drift-free and has a fairly isotropic residual noise of about 0 0.3 millimeters overall. So what I want to do now uh, is I want to uh, do that while one of the lighthouses is covered up. I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to put a piece of paper in front of the lighthouse and then we can see uh, what the noise looks like in response. Um, and the first thing that we notice is that the noise didn't really seem to change all that much. Now there's a little bit more jitter. Uh, so I'm going to collect a little bit more data, then stop tracing, and then we can measure it again. So now if I zoom in a bit more across here, there's an outlier there. Let's ignore that. We have approximately 0 0.37 millimeters that way, approximately 0 0.31 millimeters that way. But what happens now is if I turn this over, you notice that now the noise in the third dimension is significantly larger uh, than in the other two. So let's call this one Z and the other two X and Y. And if I measure this, we get a noise of about 2.1 millimeters. So we have suddenly a highly anisotropic uh, noise distribution here. And the reason for that is actually quite obvious. Uh, when both lighthouses are seeing the headset, and I'm going to uncover the second lighthouse again, uh, then they assist each other in tracking. But if only one of them is running, then it has to calculate the position of the headset basically via triangulation. And what happens with triangulation is that the position laterally to the base station, in X and Y, so to speak, uh, is much, much more closely constrained than the position in the Z direction, which would be towards or away from the base station. And that's exactly what we are seeing here. Laterally, we still had about 0 0.3 millimeters, but then away from the base station, we had 2 millimeters. That's just how this works, uh, which is why it is important um, that the headset is always seen by two lighthouses, or is always illuminated by two lighthouses. It's not just to help with occlusion, but it is also to keep the tracking noise down uh, and also to make the tracking noise isotropic, which is just uh, helpful with, uh, uh, for the display.